When you talk about the Vikings, the first images that come to mind are usually warriors and sailors with particular and well-known mythology. Gods such as Thor, Odin and Loki have become popular in recent times with films and other media. The relations between Christendom and the pagan Norse are remembered as bloody and cruel. While certainly there is much truth to this, the Christian religion always had strong relations with the population of Scandinavia during the Dark Age. Welcome to this documentary on the introduction of the Christian faith to Scandinavia and how the pagan Vikings evolved into the Christian kingdoms of Scandinavia. Shout out to Imperator Rome and Paradox Interactive for sponsoring this video. Paradox is dedicated to making the game better, and as was the case with the previous three updates, update 1.4, called Archimedes, is free and contains an entire overhaul. This time the religious system is revamped. Appoint state deities, gaining constant passive bonuses, and invoke their power. Revered relics can be stored in your national treasury, earning small bonuses. If you sack an enemy's holy sites or capital, there is a chance you might capture these special artifacts. Archimedes also adds many quality of life improvements, and more free updates are on the way, with an overhaul of the culture system in summer and the military system in autumn. Imperator Rome is on a free trial from March 31st to April 5th, and you can buy it with a 50% discount during this period. Support our channel and get this great game by clicking the link in the description. In the first six centuries of the first millennium, Denmark and the southern half of Scandinavia were populated by Germanic peoples, who sailed the northern sea and traded with the Romans. These peoples followed a set of pagan beliefs that would develop into the better known Old Norse religion. The religion was polytheistic, with the most important gods being Odin, especially in places associated with royal power, and Thor. A great emphasis was put on the worship of ancestral spirits, and rituals comprising sacrifices and offerings were common. The worship of the gods was mostly personal between the individual and the gods, without the presence of a priest, and often the ceremonies were held outside in places of natural beauty. With the expansion of the Frankish kingdom towards the Frisians and Saxons, and the Christianization of these territories during the 7th and 8th centuries, modern-day Denmark attracted the attention of the Christian Church. Being the closest region to mainland Europe, Denmark would be the region first in contact with the Christian faith. The first missionary we know of is Willebrod, who around 710 and 714 travelled from Frisia to Schleswig, that time Danish territory, to convert the locals. He had little success, halting further attempts in the area for a century. However, the Christian religion still had an influence over the culture of the Norse and their practices, which were often modified or changed over the centuries. For example, some practices we find only in the late Norse Iron Age are the rite of carving runestones in memory of the dead, or the idea of Valhalla, which was probably introduced by the concept of the Christian paradise. In 793, the attack at the monastery of Lindisfarne was perpetrated by Norwegian Vikings, and this event is considered by historians to be the start of the Viking Age. This initiated an age of increased Norse contact with the rest of Europe, both through warfare and trade, which brought Christianity to Scandinavia. In 814, in the midst of a succession crisis in Denmark, a Danish petty king called Harald came to the court of Louis the Pious, son of Charlemagne, in search of help to retake his throne. He obtained support from the Franks, and managed to be reinstated in parts of Jutland, ruling with other Danish princes. In 822, the Archbishop of Rem, Ebbo, obtained the papal mandate to convert the north, and was invited by Harald to his domains, who also converted with his family to Christianity in 826. Ebbo led missionaries to Denmark a few times with little success during the reign of Harald, which ended in 827. One of the missionaries, Angskar, was appointed to stay and lead the mission in Denmark on a permanent basis. After the death of Harald, Angskar travelled to the Swedish city of Bilka by invitation of the Swedish king Björn, where he established a small community of Christians and was remembered as Apostle of the North. 
To help with his efforts, Ansgar was appointed to the newly formed Archbishopric of Hamburg, which was established with the goal of converting the Norse. Hamburg, however, was sacked by Viking raiders in 845, and the seat of the Archbishop was moved to Bremen. This, combined with the general weakness the Empire experienced up to the coronation of Otto I, slowed down the Christianization of the Vikings, though attempts were still made in Denmark and Sweden by individuals, and some churches were built in mercantile cities such as Reba and Hedeby for foreign merchants. The Germans were not the only ones attempting to convert Scandinavia. Possibly a more important role was held by British missionaries who travelled via the North Sea. During the 9th and 10th centuries, Vikings came into contact with the Anglo-Saxon Christian peoples living in Britain, both by raiding and settling the British Isles. We know that British missionaries came to Scandinavia, but lack of written sources suggest that it was mostly individual initiatives rather than organized missions by secular rulers, such as those coming from Germany. Their influence can be seen in many areas, such as liturgical traditions, church architecture, Christian terminology, and inscribed crosses on runestones. It is also possible that slaves and captives taken back to Scandinavia helped to spread the Christian religion. Things changed under the rule of King of Denmark, Gorm the Old. Historical sources remember him as a persecutor of Christians, but the influence of Queen Chuya and threats by the German king halted this persecution. The Bishop of Bremen, Uni, travelled to the court of Gorm and received permission to proselytise in Denmark from his son, Harald Bluetooth. Uni then travelled to Sweden, where he died in 936. Around 958, Harald Bluetooth succeeded his father. He is considered the first king of all Denmark, and around 960 he converted to Christianity with his family, baptised by the cleric Popo. This event is recorded on one of the Yelling Stones, massive carved stones with a depiction of Jesus and runic text, which translates to, King Haralda ordered this monument made in memory of Gorm, his father, and in memory of Chirve, his mother, that Haralda who won for himself all of Denmark and Norway, and made the Danes Christian. While we should not take literally that all of Denmark was converted, Harald's conversion is still considered the start of Christian Denmark, and would influence Sweden and Norway to follow. The reason for the conversion was more political than religious. Historians are uncertain if the conversion followed a defeat to the German King Otto, or was instead before an attack so as to remove a Cassus belly that could prompt a German invasion. In 965, a privilege granted by Otto I established the first three bishoprics in Denmark, Aarhus, Riva, and Schleswig. It still took some time for the kings to fully embrace Christianity, as Harald's successor, Sven Forkbeard, conflicted with the Christian clergy in England during his conquest of the kingdom in the first two decades of the 11th century. Also, Sven's son, Knut the Great, while being considered a champion of the Christian church, often did not follow the Christian ethic, and for this, he went to Rome to atone for his sins. However, it is undeniable that Christianization paved the way to the formation of Knut's North Sea Empire, which comprised Denmark, England, Norway, and parts of Sweden. The biggest impact on the church under the rule of Knut was his break from the Archbishopric of Hamburg-Bremen, which had already started under his father. He invited clergy from England, Ireland, and Scotland to Denmark over German members of the church. This was a political maneuver to lessen the power that the German kings had in his courts, and some historians believe that Hamburg attempted to create a sort of Patriarchate of the North. Norway saw the first introduction to Christianity during the reign of Håkon the Good, who had been raised and baptized in England, and tried to peacefully spread Christianity during his reign from 930 to 960. In the following century, the Christianization of Norway was more or less successful, depending on who was the leader at the time, with pagan and Christian rulers succeeding each other. Under the reigns of Olaf Tryggvason and Olaf Haraldsson, at the start of the 9th century, Norway experienced violent attempts at forced Christianization, 
and rebellions by Norse pagans were crushed to establish control over the country. Also during this period, they sent missionaries to the Norse settlements in the Faroes, Iceland, Shetland and Orkney Islands. Sweden's conversion was more gradual. The kingdom was less centralized than Denmark, and sources mention a great temple in Uppsala which held immense significance. Around 990, the Christian king Olaf Wetkonung and the heathens agreed to tolerate each other, creating a society where both religions were practiced and were peaceful up to the end of the 11th century. Bishoprics were generally set up later in the country, when compared to both Denmark and Norway. There is no sign of forced baptism, also because the attempts were made by kings not strong enough to convert the whole country. The perception that Sweden was heathen lasted into the following century, even though most of Sweden converted, and even the Norwegian king, Sigurd Jorsafell, launched a crusade in Sweden in the 12th century as a pretext for expansion. Some Vikings, spearheaded by those from Sweden, established communities in the land of the Rus, where they entered into contact with the Byzantine court. Here some Vikings converted, but archaeological evidence suggests that Greek influence in the conversion of Scandinavia was negligible. Iceland, which had been colonized by the Norwegians from around 870, had already seen an influx of Christians during the first half of the 10th century, and in the latter half British missionaries had come to the island. In the year 1000, the Icelandic council ruled that the island would be Christian. During the same period, the pharaohs adopted Christianity. With the decline of the bishopric of Hamburg, we find a greater interest by the Pope towards the kingdoms of Scandinavia. The first contact between kings and the Pope can be probably traced to Knut the Great's trip to Rome in 1026, where he also met the King of Burgundy and the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. The Pope, at the time in conflict with the Emperor during the investiture controversy, helped Scandinavia to free itself from the influence of the Germans by establishing new archbishoprics, such as the Archbishopric of Lund in 1104, which was the highest church in Scandinavia. This meant that Bremen Hamburg no longer had jurisdiction over the north. Lund held this position until 1152, when the elevation of the Bishopric of Nidaros to Archbishopric in Trondheim made the Norwegian church independent from the Danish church and it was followed in 1164 by the formation of the Archbishopric of Uppsala in Sweden. As we have seen, the Christianization of Scandinavia was often encouraged and partaken of by kings or members of the nobility, and only later spread to the common folk. The reasons for this can be found in the benefits that Christianity gave the Norse rulers, such as better relations with the stronger powers of Europe, such as the Pope, Emperor and Kings of Germany. It was attractive to the Norse rulers to have a class of educated people among their subjects, from which administrators and counsellors could be drafted from the clergy. In fact, we can associate the creations of the kingdoms of Denmark, Norway and Sweden with their conversion to Christianity. The establishment of bishoprics, which happened during the 10th and 11th centuries, was another factor for this Christianization as it's believed that nearly all of Denmark was Christian after the death of Knut the Great, who had greatly focused on the church hierarchy in his kingdoms, establishing new bishoprics in Denmark. Another drive for Christianization was the building of churches undertaken by kings and members of the nobility. For the common folk instead, the adoption of Christianity was more gradual. The adoption of Christianity often came from the top down, when the king adopted Christianity his vassals were often encouraged to follow him, and so would then people loyal to the noble. However, not always was this the case, as the first Christians in Scandinavia were those converted by the early missionaries before the kings adopted the new religion. For many decades, however, old folklore and beliefs were mixed in Scandinavian households. Offerings to the old spirits were still made to not anger them, and some of the more peripheric regions held on to old beliefs. Sometimes the cults of saints helped to Christianize Scandinavia more rapidly, especially the cults of local saints such as Olaf the Saint, King of Norway. Though the minority, not all people accepted Christianity at first. In a Norse saga, 
it is recounted that a Swedish king, Inja, was forced around the year 1080 to flee his kingdom, as his heathen subjects did not approve of his rejections of the old customs. But he managed to return three years later and reintroduce Christianity in his kingdom. We already mentioned the bloody conversions of pagans in Norway by Olaf Tryggvason and Olaf the Saint, where people were tortured and temples destroyed, which seem to be the only examples of widespread violence during the conversion of Scandinavia. The conversion was helped by integrating Norse symbology, such as the Hammer of Thor, which became the cross. Norse paganism was strongly affiliated with nature spirits, so often missionaries would build chapels in places with significance for the pagans, such as at the top of hills or at beautiful beaches. With the passing of time, the significance of the place was taken over by the saints of the chapels. We always have more stories to tell, so make sure you are subscribed to our channel and have pressed the bell button. We would like to express our gratitude to our Patreon supporters and channel members who make the creation of our videos possible. Now you can also support us by buying our merchandise via the link in the description. This is the Kings and Generals channel, and we will catch you on the next one.